This is a third update to my bench work progress since restarting my uh, model railroad project. And this is the item I was waiting for in order to fill the small window. And it's a 24 by 36 inch reproduction of a 1949 Southern Pacific travel poster. And since this window, there's not going to be a sunscreen on the outside, so you're going to be able to see whatever's inside the window. I decided I want something interesting to look at when I'm sitting out on my patio. And other than having just the tan colored insulation board, I thought having this poster on the board as I looked through the window, I thought that would be kind of cool. I attached the poster to the insulation with 3M77 spray adhesive. And once it tacks up, it gives a pretty good bond. And now that I have my poster, I went ahead and filled in behind the window with two two-inch sheets of foam insulation for a total of four inches of insulation which ends up being about 15 R, so it makes a significant difference. I continued on with the bench work framing, and I have the vertical 2x3s installed for attaching the backdrop. And once I have the backdrop installed, I start installing the valance in that section. And the valance is built exactly the same way as it is on the rest of the layout. It has L girders on top, and then it has cantilever cross members going across the valance. I glue the cross members in place with tight bond. And then after the glue sets up for a little bit, I run some screws down through the L girder into the cross members. I built a small 9 inch wide, 60 inch long section of bench work that installs up on top of the air conditioner. And all of the bench work in this section is going to be fairly narrow. I just need enough bench work to loop the track around so I have continuous running. And I want the area open so it doesn't block the air conditioner. After attaching the 9x60 bench work, I start assembling pieces for a short wall section. Now this small wall section serves a couple purposes. One is it allows me a little bit of a view block to the door window, but primarily it just allows me to wrap the backdrop around the corner. And this section of the bench work was constructed exactly the same as the rest of it. The only difference is there's a freestanding leg on the end of the small wall section. Here's a view from the doors that lead into the house. Had to make another Home Depot trip. And I got there at 5 o'clock when they opened and decided to take my miniature Schnauzer Max with me and <laughs> I wheeled him around in the shopping cart while I put lumber in the in the other cart and just like every dog he's always up for a car ride and with the framework completed in that section of the bench work uh, the short wall and the area around the air conditioner I started to work on covering up the top of the valance I bought some Luon plywood for the top of the valance. Uh, the plywood is very light. It's not very strong, but it doesn't need to be strong. And I set a 4x8 sheet up there, and I just took my pencil and traced it from below. And 
I used my circular saw to cut the long straight lines and then finished off the curved cut with my jigsaw. The Luan plywood is glued with tight bond and then it's stapled in place. And here's a look from the bottom with it glued and stapled in place. I had a piece of 8 inch MDF clamped in place to simulate the fascia and when I traced out the plywood I traced around that fascia and I got a nice curved cut there. Here I'm continuing to add the Luan plywood to the top of the valance. And the cantilever construction of the valance is actually quite strong. I mean, I don't know how much weight I'd want to put up there, but I have no fear of it coming down. I found some 8 inch 4x8 sheets of MDF at Home Depot and one side of the sheet had a lightly textured white finish and I thought well that would be nice for the painting surface uh, number one it's better than primer because it's, it's a sealed surface and so I bought several sheets of that to use and here I attached it to the small wall in the corner. I'm getting ready to attach the fascia to the front of the valance and in the section in the corner where I built the small wall I attached this block that has a small angle cut into it because I need to make a real sharp bend here with the MDF. I marked the fascia where it's going to bend around that corner where I attached that block and this MDF will bend to a pretty tight radius but it won't bend to that tight of a radius but if you saturate the back side of the MDF you can really turn this stuff into some really small radius circles. Here I have the fascia clamped in place and I'm going to let this dry overnight and the area where I got it wet to bend around that corner when it's completely dry that's going to take a set. In the morning, once this is dried, I'm going to come back and permanently attach it. I'll have to cut a small filler piece for this corner. After cutting the other end of the valance, I didn't have enough material in that corner to cover it all up, so I'll have to cut a little patch piece and stick it in there. The three 1x3s set the radius of the bend on the end of the fascia. The fascia is 6 inches deep and I went ahead and cut pieces and permanently attached the fascia to all the completed valance sections. There's no structural need for this little blob on the end of the valance. I just thought it would look nice and so that's why I did it. I do have a few gaps between the Luan plywood and the fascia and if I get a lot of light leakage I can go in and caulk those shut. The blue circle shows the area of the benchwork we've been looking at and you can see that once the benchwork is complete it's going to limit the access I have to the air conditioner. The benchwork will be open to allow 
airflow from the air conditioner, but access to the controls is going to be limited. To solve my problem with limited access to the air conditioner controls, I decided to install a wireless thermostat. <laughs> and here you can see the box. I, I have the Spanish language side. I can't, I can't read Spanish, but for some reason that's the side I showed on the box. Here's the thermostat that came with the kit. See, it's a nice toasty 92 degrees in my room. First step in installing the wireless thermostat was to connect the control board with the supplied harness. And with my LG unit, I had to clip the OB wire. And once everything was the way the instructions said they should be, I powered it up and gave it a test run. It's been incredibly hot in Goodyear, Arizona this week, with daytime highs between 115 and 118, so I definitely need my air conditioner. I turn on my thermostat, and it says it's on. All right, the unit has switched into remote, and we're soon to get some action. I have the new controller board mounted, and I have the cover back on the factory electronics cabinet. And now I can put the cover back on the air conditioner. My air conditioner is also a heater. Uh, the unit is actually called a PTAC unit, very similar to what you would see in a motel room. I decided to mount the thermostat up by the doors that lead into the house. That way when I enter the room I can turn it on and when I exit I can turn it off. I worked on the peninsula bench work a little bit more and I installed this framing to install those white sheets that I used in the small wall over by the air conditioner. So this area is going to be all blanked off on the one side that's in the aisleway. Well that's it for now. It's so hot right now that I only work on this a few hours a day early in the morning. Um, hopefully it'll cool down a little bit and I can work on it a little bit longer each day. But a little bit is better than nothing, so I'll keep plugging away.